Hola amigos, ¿cómo están? Hey friends and bienvenidos. Welcome back to the Language Tutor Spanish series. I have another viewer request for you. We're just bringing those in one after another. You know, I was on the Language Tutor Spanish Facebook page and my friend Karen Scott sent me this great idea about various words and phrases that you would use in a restaurant. You know, we've talked about food, we've learned food words and drink words and all those sorts of things. But, uh, you know, we need those phrases that we would use in conversation, real, real life phrases. Okay, now we're going ahead, just go ahead and start by saying this. There are lots and lots of different ways to say things in any language. You just think about ordering in English. You know, we could say it five different ways right off the top of our heads without even thinking about it very much. So there are lots of different ways. In this video, I want to get you started with some really helpful phrases and words that you would use and then get those down. And as I always say, get these down and build upon that. Bring in new ones because there are a lot of different ways. And it depends on what country you're in. You're going to hear various things in different ways as well. Okay, but let's jump right in. First of all, I want to start with some general places you might visit. First, we have a restaurant. We've learned this word before, el restaurante. Restaurant in English, just put an E at the end. Remember, it's masculine, no big deal. Also, you may go to el bar, el bar, which is the bar. And the tavern is la tasca, la tasca. And a cafe, cafeteria style, smaller place, more informal, is la cafeteria, la cafeteria. And here's a cool one. Uh, if you're in some countries, they like these nice little rustic ends. A lot of times these places have such cool history inside them. And so a, an, an inn might be el mesón, el mesón. All right. Now let's get into some general words and phrases that you could very well need in a restaurant. So the starter plate. An appetizer, what you eat first. We have a couple different words I'm going to give you. You might see this on the menu. El primer plato. El primer plato. Literally the first plate. You might also see it called entrante. Entrante. And you might see entrada. Entrada. Yeah, those are all common. Now, a small dish. Some people like to call these little snacks, finger foods. You might see las tapas. Las tapas, all right? And I know in Spain, it's very common for, you know, students to go after school and, and sit at a, a small cafe and have tapas. It's very common. All right, now, if you're looking at size of plates and meals and serving portions and that sort of thing, a half portion could be una media ración, una media ración, okay? Now, a full portion is just simply una ración, una ración. We just don't put the media on there. All right. Now, the main meal is sometimes called segundo, segundo, the second, because you have it after the appetizer. Do the appetizer and then the main meal. All right. Now, a mixed plate, sometimes you'll see a mixed plate, is el plato Combinado, el plato combinado. Now, usually that is like a main course and a side dish together. Some restaurants, depending on where it is, some restaurants, basically you order the main course and that's it. And if you want to side it separately, you order it separately. So that might be a good phrase that you will need at some point. Now, the entree, the main course, could also be called plato fuerte, plato fuerte, the, the strong plate. All right. Now, here's some phrases. <clears throat> you walk in, I'd like a table for two, please. Por favor, quisiera una mesa para dos personas. So notice that we're not saying quiero. I mean, we could, but it's really nicer, more polite to say quisiera, I would like. And we're saying para, for two people. Now, if you want to get more specific, okay, what if I'm you know, talking about specifically what type of group I have, you might something like this. 
I need a table for five, please. Two adults and three kids. Por favor, necesito una mesa para cinco personas. Somos, we use that to say what we are, our, what our group is. Somos dos adultos y tres niños. Okay? So that's how we break that up and make it more specific. Okay. Now, I would like to make a reservation for blank people. You could just simply say, quisiera hacer una reserva para however many people, personas. You know, you could say para cinco personas or whatever the case may be. All right. Now, somebody might ask you, if you're on the phone with them and you make that reservation, they, they may say, bajo el nombre de quien, under whose name. Bajo el nombre de quien. All right, so be expecting to hear that if you're calling to make a reservation. Can I sit at the bar? Podría sentarme en el bar? Podría sentarme en el bar? Okay. Can I see the menu, please? Puedo ver el menú, por favor? Puedo ver el menú, por favor? What do you recommend? Sometimes that's a really good question to ask, especially if you're in a foreign country. Okay, so what do you recommend? ¿Qué me recomienda? ¿Qué me recomienda? Now, we've talked about this a little bit before in previous lessons, but when you're saying recommend something to someone, you're usually going to use that indirect object pronoun. Metele, nosos, les. All right, it's typically used to show who is being recommended to. So that's why we have me there. You know, if they're asking you, are you ready? And you say, um, one moment, please. Un momento, por favor. Un momento, por favor. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, we, need no, we need more time to decide. Okay, fair enough. Necesitamos más tiempo para decidir. Necesitamos más tiempo para decidir in order to decide. I am ready to order. Estoy listo para Ordenar, or you can also say para pedir. Okay. Both of those work as order. Ordenar or pedir. Depends on where you are. You may hear either one or the other. Okay. Now let's talk about how to say I would like. Now I've already told you quisiera. Okay. I showed you this one. I said it's a little more polite. But honestly, there are several ways to say what you would like to eat. It depends on where you are. You may hear quisiera, you may hear me pones, you put to me. You may hear me das, you give me. You may hear tomo, I'll take. And you may hear just quiero in some situations. And you might hear para mí, uh, for me. You may hear it started that way, all right. Now, you want to ask about a particular plate, and you say, what is included? ¿Qué está incluido? ¿Qué está incluido? Does it come with a salad? ¿Viene con ensalada? ¿Viene con ensalada? What is the soup of the day? ¿Cuál es la sopa del día? ¿Cuál es la, la sopa del día? Now, I hope you don't need this one, but you might. This is not what I ordered. Okay, sorry, this is not what I ordered. Esto no es lo que he pedido. This is not what I have ordered. Okay, esto no es lo que he pedido. We'd like to pay separately. This is extremely common. Nos gustaría pagar por separado. Nos gustaría pagar por separado. All right. Do you have a to-go box? <laughs> That's what we call them here. Uh, Carry-out box, to-go box, whatever. Um, Tienen una caja para llevar. Tienen una caja para llevar. To carry, right? Llevar. All right. The tip is called la propina. La propina. Now, if you want to ask, is the tip included? Because that is different in different countries. La propina está incluida. La propina está incluida. Can I have the check, please? Me puede traer la cuenta, por favor. Me puede traer 
la cuenta, por favor. Now let's move into some things that the waiter might very well say. Okay, so you got to be ready to understand what he's going to say. What would you like to drink? ¿Qué desea beber? ¿Qué desea beber? Now this desea, you know, desear means to want or wish. Yeah, and honestly, yes, you you might hear other forms of want, querer, um, but also desea might be common as well. What would you like to eat? Que desea comer. Que desea comer. Now, I have heard in many, many restaurants where I've spoken Spanish, I've heard many times them just say something to drink, just keeping it simple. And I've heard these two phrases, algo tomar or algo beber. Okay, now, both of those work as to drink. It depends on where you are. I know if, uh, a lot of times I've been in Mexican restaurants where people speak Mexican dialect, they're going to lean toward tomar more so than beber. All right, but you know both of them, so you're going to be ready to go. Are you ready to order? Están listos para ordenar. Están listos para ordenar. What would you like to order? ¿Qué desea ordenar? ¿Qué desea ordenar? And once again, they could be using pedir as well instead of ordenar. And they might just simply say, what do you want? Que quiere? All right. Now you order something and they say, I'm sorry, we're out. We don't have that. I hope that doesn't happen to you. But they might say, lo siento, no tenemos. I'm sorry, we don't have. And you may even hear, lamento, no tenemos. If they're being polite, lamento, no, ten no tenemos. And then they'll state what it is that they don't have. All right, so hopefully they're coming by to check on you in the restaurant, and they say, how is everything? ¿Cómo está todo? ¿Cómo está todo? Okay, is everything okay? ¿Todo está bien? ¿Todo está bien? And you may very well hear this. Enjoy your meal. I've heard this in so many countries. They say, buen provecho. Buen provecho. All right, now I wanted to end this episode with some different types of coffee. This was another great idea that Karen had. Different types of coffee. Now, uh, I want to tell you that coffee is fixed differently in different countries. I've learned this firsthand. So I'll explain a couple of things to you. But just normal black coffee is usually called café solo. Café solo. Now, in Latin American countries, uh, Central America, South America, it's very popular to order an American coffee. Café americano. Café americano. These are, these are very popular. Now, you might also order your café cortado, cortado, which literally means cut, past participle of cut. Now, if you order this, you're going to get your coffee with just a little milk, okay? But if you order your coffee with milk, café con leche, expect more milk than you're normally used to here in the United States, or at least we are. Our coffee is coffee, and then you just put you know, probably a couple of tablespoons of milk in there. That's about it, or cream, whatever. But if you order café con leche, expect more milk. You're going to get, you might get half a coffee and half milk. It, it just depends. Okay, and then one more, café con hielo. Café con hielo, this is coffee with ice. So if you like that iced coffee, which I'm not a big fan of. That's okay. It's okay. I've had it before in France, but it is okay. Um, but if that's your thing, now you can order that as well. Well, amigos, I hope this has been beneficial to you. I hope this has helped you out. And uh, hey, jump on to the Language Tutor Spanish Facebook page and join us. And hey, help us out by answering those uh, membership questions. That just lets us know you're, you're serious. You're really wanting to join and not a scammer or a spammer. We don't like those. We don't like our people being bothered with those. All right, but so answer those membership questions, jump on there with us, and hey, check out our Teespring shop right here on the YouTube channel. Pick up a language tutor t-shirt, hoodie, coffee cup, whatever, and all that goes to help support our channel here. We do appreciate you. All right, amigos, I wish for you paz y bendiciones, peace and blessings, and I will see you on the next episode. Hasta pronto. Friends, thanks for watching The Language Tutor. If you have a question for me, feel free to leave it in the comment section below the video. And please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you'll never miss any of our language lessons.